This lesson deals with transform circuits. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 10, starting on page one. Chapter 10 deals with S domain circuit analysis. And let's take a look at a resistance and how it maps from the time domain to the S domain. In ECE 201, we had a resistance R, and if we had a current I of T flowing in it, then we had a drop from plus to minus, current entering the plus, leaving the minus, absorbing power. And our relationship was that the voltage V of T was R times I of T. Take that now and take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. The Laplace transform of V of T would just be V of S. The Laplace transform of R times I of T would be equal to R times the Laplace transform of I of T since R is not a function of time and just a scalar. So here's our S domain equivalent of Ohm's law. We make up a circuit element that does this. Well, let's use the same symbol of the resistance. Current I of S flowing through it, entering the plus terminal, leaving the minus terminal, and defining that to be V of S. And this will be our S domain equivalent circuit of a resistance. Okay, how about an inductance next? In ECE 201, we define the following, that if we had a current I of T flowing through an inductance L, that the voltage across it, again, absorbing power, entering the plus terminal, leaving the minus, the voltage was equal to L di dt. Take a Laplace transform on both sides of the equation. So we'd have again V of S, and the Laplace transform of this would be just L times the Laplace transform of the derivative of I of T dt, since L is not a function of time. In chapter nine on page nine, we show that the Laplace transform of the derivative of I of T dt was equal to S times I of S minus I of zero minus. Multiply through by L here. So we have SL times I of S, and then minus L times I of zero minus. Now that we have the relationship for V of S is equal to SL times I of S minus L times I of zero minus, what circuit element or elements would this represent? So what we've got here really is trying to make up a circuit that has the same equations as our transform. We've got a voltage V of S. We really have voltage equals voltage plus voltage. Now the current I of S is entering and this looks like our Ohm's law relationship. So let's put a series inductance within value of S times L, and then the drop across it would be SL times I of S. And lastly, we have a, another voltage here with a minus sign, so we'll put a minus and then a plus, and then the value of L times I of zero minus. So this circuit has the same equations as our transform. So it'll be a model for our S domain inductance. Now let's do a source transformation. We get a rather nice result if we do that. The term here, our inductance, SL, would still be the same, but now it's gonna be in parallel with a current source whose value is the voltage divided by S times L. The L's cancel, and I get I of zero minus divided by S. This is our initial value of current in the inductance as a step function. It's like having a switch changing at time T equals zero. We're seeing a, a value of current that doesn't jump instantaneously in the inductance. So we use this as our S domain model for an inductance. Next, let's do a capacitance. In our time domain definition, having a capacitance C and a current I flowing through it, we create a voltage V of T, and the relationship, as we found in chapter six of ECE 201, is that the voltage is one over C integral from zero to T, I of X dx plus V sub C of zero minus. Take a Laplace transform on both sides of the equation. So the Laplace transform of V of T is V of S. Laplace transform of an integral was equal to the function I of S divided by S, and then it's just a scalar, so it's one over C. We also found that the Laplace transform of a constant was a step function. So again, we want to come up with a model. What we've got here is voltage equals voltage plus voltage. So here's our rise in voltage would equal these two drops. And so I've got the current I of S entering, and that would be flowing through a capacitance. But if we had the value of capacitance equal to S times C, then we would create this drop across here as I of S divided by SC. And then we have this term here, V of C of zero minus divided by S. So this circuit, the rise in voltage equals this drop plus this drop matches our transform. And so we could have this serve as a model. And again, this voltage here would be a step function with the initial condition of the capacitor voltage. Let's revisit the idea of impedance and emittance again. Now suppose you go back and have zero initial conditions. For the resistance, we have V of S is equal to R times I of S. There are no initial conditions. For the inductance, we had the inductance SL times I of S, and then the initial condition was I of zero minus divided by S. So if you have a zero initial condition, we just had the V of S is equal to SL times I of S. Likewise, for the capacitance, V of S was equal to one over SC I of S, and then plus the initial condition divided by S. So if that was zero, we just had the relationship again between voltage and current, just like we did in chapter eight. So we could just draw a box in general and call it Z, 
And if we have a resistance, then R is in the box. If we have an inductance, it would be a value of SL. And if it was a capacitance, 1 over SC for the impedance. What's happening here in the S domain is that S is playing the role of J omega that we had in chapter 8. Now since voltage sources, current sources, and controlled sources just have scalar multipliers of voltage and current, then their S domain models are exactly the same as their time domain model. It's just simply that T is replaced by S. Let's take a look at Kirchhoff's voltage law in the S domain. Let me state the theorem first, then we'll take a look at the proof of it. The algebraic sum of the S domain voltage rises equals the algebraic sum of the S domain voltage drops around any closed path. In other words, if you had a rise in voltages of 1 through J, that would equal the drops of K through N. And why would that be true? Well, in the time domain in ECE201, we had exactly the same statement, but in the time domain, that voltages V1 through Vj were rises in voltage, and K through N were drops. So again, the rise in voltages equals the drops. Take the Laplace transform on both sides of the equation, and by our linearity property, the Laplace transform of the sum is the sum of the Laplace transforms. We have V1 of S through V sub J of S, equaling V sub K of S through V sub N of S. How about Kirchhoff's current law? Let's do the same thing. Let's just state the theorem. First, then we'll take a look at the proof. The algebraic sum of the S domain currents entering a node equals the algebraic sum of the S domain currents leaving the node. Well, the proof of this is very similar to the proof we did for Kirchhoff's voltage law. We're just replacing V by I. Pretty much the proof is the same. Since Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and Kirchhoff's current law are valid in the S domain, then all of our circuit theorems are also valid in the S domain. And these are some of the properties of transformed circuits.